Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the controversy surrounding Greg Locke and his sermon about witches? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the incident then offer my analysis. Greg Locke was born in Donaldson, Tennessee on May 18, 1976. He claims that he was arrested six times and was sent to a boys' home in 1992. While he was there, he converted to evangelical Christianity. In 1996, he became a Baptist evangelist. In 1998, he earned a bachelor's degree in biblical studies, and in 2000, a master's degree in revival history. In November of 2006, he founded the Global Vision Baptist Church. He is the pastor of this church, which is located east of Nashville, Tennessee, in Mount Juliet. Greg was married for 21 years. He divorced in 2018. He claimed that his wife had mental health problems. That same year, he married an administrative assistant who works at the church. Greg Locke is known to be quite enthusiastic and to hold a number of unusual and strong beliefs. A few examples, Greg is not a fan of the COVID-19 vaccines. He does not like any restrictions meant to protect people. For example, he told his followers that he would turn them away if they wore masks to his services. He accused Anthony Fauci of being a lying, genocidal psychopath. In early 2022, Greg Locke started an initiative against demons, which included holding a book burning. The targeted books included Harry Potter, Twilight, and other works he considered to be satanic. Greg Locke maintains unusual views about mental health as well. He suggested that autism spectrum disorder is really demon possession. He noted the diagnosis does not appear anywhere in the Bible. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On February 13, 2022, Greg delivered a speech in front of his congregation that attracted some negative attention. After the offering and some singing, he started talking about a conversation he had with a demon he was casting out of a young girl. Apparently, this demon had a lot of information for Greg. The demon revealed the names of six witches who had been sent to infiltrate the church. These were not just any witches, rather, according to Greg, they were full-blown spell-casting witches. Greg suggested that the young girl did not know enough people in the church to have named these witches, so the information must have been from the demon. Greg said, quote, We got first and last names of six witches that are in our church, and you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now, unquote. I find it interesting that Greg Locke would ever use the expression, and you know what's strange. This is like asking if you can point to something green in a forest. There are a lot of potential correct answers. Pretty much everything Greg says is strange. Greg invited the witches to look him in the eyeballs, stating he was not afraid of them. He indicated that he had the address for one of the witches. Greg then proceeds to make a number of statements. The witches were sent to destroy the church. They were sent to lure the members in. In a separate interview, he clarified that the witches were there to convince members to engage in infidelity with them. Some of the witches were sent to cast spells. Members who were sick became this way because they befriended a witch. Two of the witches were in a Bible study with Greg's wife. He was going to ask them to get out. If they refused, he would expose them to everybody. Greg then suggested the witches had a choice to leave. If they showed up at church next Sunday, he would have a stage full of brooms available and would fly them out of the church. So in a way, Greg is saying that he knows how to ride a flying broom, just like a witch. Greg invited them to entertain devils if they want to, just not at his church. He suggested that the lives of the church members have already been destroyed over and over in the media They have nothing to lose. This must have been the uplifting portion of the sermon. Nothing depressing about that statement. 
Greg recommends that the audience believe in witches if they do not already. He implied the town was full of witches and Freemasons. Then he said the witches were not just in Salem, Oregon. They were everywhere. If he is referring to the Salem witch trials, I believe those occurred in Salem Village, Massachusetts. These days it's Danvers, Massachusetts. It was never Salem, Oregon. Greg is about 3,100 miles off. This makes me wonder, what kind of witch expert is Greg Locke? I'm starting to think he doesn't know anything about witches, despite his claims about riding a broom. Maybe it's not his fault. After all, he obtained his information from a demon. As a group, demons notoriously underperform in history class. Moving back to Greg's sermon, Greg started talking about a specific head witch he said was a vocalist at a church in Nashville. The demon gave him the name, address, business, birthday, and age of this head witch. Three days after this sermon, Greg defended his message to other Christians who were criticizing him. He suggested these Christians were lukewarm enablers of spiritual wickedness. Now moving to my analysis. Here are a few items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. I find it interesting that Greg hates demons, yet he is essentially using a demon as an informant. How does this work? How did he convince a demon to tell him anything? Was he threatening the demon with physical harm? Is this part of Greg Locke's Snitches on Witches to Avoid Stitches program? It just doesn't make any sense. So he's casting the demon out, and the demon stops and says, Wait, before you finish that proclamation, I have some information I think you would be interested in. It's about witches. Greg's like, full-blown spellcasting witches? The demon responds, Is there any other kind, Greg? I wonder if this whole exposing of the witches wasn't just petty on the part of the demon. Like he was mad that he was getting cast out, so as he was exiting, he was like, Hey, there are witches here too. Why do they get to stay? My last point on this item, how did the demon establish credibility? Did he say to Greg Locke, Hey, you can trust me. When have you ever heard of a story where a demon lies? Moving to item number two. Greg appears to take delight in the fact that people are criticizing him. The more frequently he makes bizarre statements, and the more bizarre those statements are, the more he gets criticized and the happier he is. He may be creating controversy in order to draw fire and then be able to play the victim. This probably makes his church members rally behind him even more. Like they are all being attacked, they have to stick together to survive. Greg may simply be manipulating his members with stories about witches, demons, Freemasons, and conspiracy theories. He is essentially telling them, it's us against the world. Item number three. Some have suggested that even though Greg Locke is talking about witches running around his church, this is really his way of getting rid of people that have offended him in some way. Perhaps they confronted him about something he was doing or suggested he was not a good pastor, which would appear to be an accurate suggestion. Who knows? But either way, he's getting back at them by labeling them as witches. It's like his simplistic, expedient method for getting rid of dissent. As I understand it, Greg's church may have witches, but it does not have any elders, no board of directors, no leadership of any type, except for Greg Locke. He is in complete control and probably not a big fan of opposing views. His church is named Global Vision, but it's more like Greg Vision. Now moving to my final thoughts. One of the most effective ways that an authoritarian leader maintains control of people is to convince them that they are victims, like they deserve more because someone is out to get them. Essentially, the leader is trying to sell them on the idea of taking on vulnerable narcissistic characteristics, hypersensitivity to criticism, insecurity, and resentfulness can pave the road to success. In reality, of course, it only leads to the success of the leader. I find it interesting that Greg Locke insists that he is telling the truth when he said all his information came from a demon. The only way that Greg Locke is telling the truth is if Greg Locke is the demon. To be fair, he does make a good case for that theory. Those are my thoughts on the case of Greg Locke, 
Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis to be as intriguing as a demon avoiding stitches by snitching on witches. Thanks for watching.